So, let us get going. Fashionably late by an hour. But uh, hopefully we'll still be led into uh, Lou Barton's party. Something's up with the loading times. <clears throat> they weren't like this before. The in-game rain, the terrain, in fact the trade quarter has a bunch of stuff going on in it. I don't know. Or maybe my computer is just starting to show signs of feeling a good old round of cleaning. So I did actually investigate it a bit earlier, <coughs> recently, and discovered, hmm, it could really go for a cleaning. But, uh, that'll happen soon. Yes, it will happen soon. Let us see. What brings you here? I don't know how all the passengers are just yelling at us. A new narrow cord. Also, full of NPCs. Oh, I'm not being shown the corner this time, that's alright. Pretty nice. Okay, so he's not guiding it, he wants us to be nice. Let's go and be nice. There is no woman, huh? The prince sometimes I can't do it. Look, sat like Abigail, but that's for my companion. I gotta sneeze. Oh my god. That's stress. First. There we go. Here we are. Wipe that frown off your face, you'll be fine. Can't we go back to your place? Make sure I have no internal injuries. Later, Geralt. Come on, this isn't so bad. Let's mingle. Mm -hmm. Those damned elves are the worst of it. So maybe we need someone else. Everybody to knows elves are scum. If I run into one, I'll have him impaled. He's liable to enjoy it. <laughs> uh, see, the Herald probably has something to say. Welcome to Lord Levarden's feast. Stress of anything to say? Smile, Witcher. This won't take long. Okay. But Lugard himself. Geralt of Rivia and Triss Merigold, welcome! Greetings. I thank you for coming. Uh, look about the room and you will see the entire kingdom represented. We thank you for your invitation. Forgive me, I must return to my duties. I'm certain we'll speak later. Sure we will. Sure we will. Add a count to wet. Uh, right around. He's now. Is that taller? Yeah. Let's see. These seem to be the most interesting ones, so let's go for Velorad first. Geralt, allow me to introduce Burgomeister Velorad. Charmed. Greetings. It's uh, been a while. Velorad is King Foltest's right hand. No need for formal introductions. If you wish to open a factory or a shop, uh, kill a monster or petition the king, uh, you must come to me. I'll remember that. Excuse us, Burgermeister, but we need to say hello to the other guests. Can I hand in the quest things now? The remaining no. guests are in that room. Okay, we've got an entry on The governs the Seema, the capital city of Temeria, in Fulter's absence. Velorad holds the highest authority in the city. The Burgermeister knows me from long ago since he was the one with whom I negotiated the contract for lifting Princess Adda's Striga curse. Although I don't remember Velorad, I have a vague feeling that he has grown old and taken to drink since we first met. People say that Velorad has lost his authority and doesn't run the city as efficiently as he used to. Who's this guy? <laughs> Okay. Haste is here. Geralt, have you met Taller? Taller? Here? Let me introduce my master, the Honorable Erkin von Blunt. Good day, sir. Erkin has taken a vow of silence and thus cannot answer. You must be wondering why he is here. Indeed. He has made numerous vows in his life, one of which is to protect <laughs> the royal family. Sadly, for unknown reasons, Princess Ada holds little respect for him. 
Vows, however, must be honored, whatever the circumstances. And how are you involved? Are you bound by his vows by extension? He authorized me to speak on his behalf, and I serve as his advisor. Of course. We shan't be bothering you. Come, Geralt. So, you may be noticing that Tala is speaking differently here than usual. Well, I'm not met him. To our surprise, Tala the Fence was invited to Lugon's reception, at which only the rich and influential were present. Can we have a chat with him? We'll speak shortly. Yes, we'll speak shortly. The nobles were hit hardest by the plague. <laughs> yeah, let's check out the Count de Vet. Get out of my sight, freak. Of course, that's what he'll say, considering he's member for the Order. And de Wet, I'm fairly certain that a prominent character in the books had that surname too. And he was uh, an interesting fella. Milady, allow me to present the sorceress Triss Merigold, and... Duet, I know who stands before me. We know each other, do we not, Witcher? One could say so, Princess. A princess, indeed, though I do not always feel like one. So many duties, you could not imagine, Witcher. Why do you <laughs> stare? Is my dress displeasing? Ah, forgive me, my lady. But even the finest dress would pale in comparison to you. I see you still wear the gemstone with the inclusion. The curse. <laughs> Let's see. Top one is obviously flirting. Let's consider the circumstances. There's a knight of the order standing next to her and he sounded Nilfgaardian, or at least not from Tamaria. Even though, so far, Tamarians have been both American and English. So... But no, he is most likely a North Guardian because Divet or Divet was also a North Guardian in the books. And a pretty interesting fella. I just can't remember much about him at, at this moment in time. So I need something to jog my memory. But let's go for the gemstone, the curse, considering that's probably what Geralt and his autism would notice first. I see you still wear the gemstone with the inclusion. The curse. Shut your filthy mouth, mutant. But the curse may yet. Enough! Your Highness, allow me to cast this drifter out. We no longer desire to speak with you. Step away. Okay. You've met everyone who's anyone. I need to speak with Levarden. You behave yourself. Beware of anyone who tries to pry information from you. From me? But I'm just a witcher. <laughs> Don't be fooled. Anything you say may have political ramifications. Uh oh. Well, the guests. Adder, at Blue Garden's reception, we had the chance to meet Princess Adder some years ago. We relieved her of the Striga curse. That's what, that was what happened in the intro cinematic. You know, that was 25 or so hours ago. <laughs> if you're not reaching the 30 hour mark at this point. And the princess has grown into a pretty, if somewhat wild and spoiled girl. Yeah, had we done the other option to wet or to vet, we'd probably have a gone. Shut your filthy mouth, mutant! as well. So, Hawkstein. First time since we arrived at Kelmorhin, saw a truly happy man. Daughter Tower in the swamps of wide open. Hawkstein was as delirious as Dragon City Wolf. Count de Vat at Lugard's reception. He hails from Nilfgaard, belongs to the Order of the Flaming Rose, and advises King Fultes on behalf of the Order. He is exceptionally loathsome and arrogant, and he came to hate me from the moment we met. Devet arrived at the party in the company of Princess Adda. I sense there is something going on between them. It's interesting that a North Guardian would be a member of the Order. But, um. Can we chat with this guy now? We could have a drink with him, but we could also choose not to. Hmm. We'd probably talk if we give him a drink, but let's. Avoid drinking with them until we've spoken with everyone else. Speak freely, Geralt, but no politics. I want to ask about the princess. No politics. About the curse. Shh. I could use something stronger. Fine. Ask. Does the princess have strange dreams? How would I know? <laughs> I've not spoken to Ada without one of those bastards from the Order prisons. Any strange behavior? 
You're awfully close to treason. I'm not asking out of want for political influence. Our sweet princess is completely normal. Well, uh, her head's a little messed up. Is she aggressive? On occasion, but not unusual for a spoiled damsel. I don't know, she's... What? Well... Spit it out. She needs a man to give her a proper lay. Right. <laughs> Must go. Later. Okay, can we chat with him about anything else? I'm listening. Also, politics or give him a gift? Let's just ask about politics first. Can I ask about politics? I thought you were a decent fellow. When will the king return? Everybody's asking that question today. I tell everyone the same. He'll return in due course. I hope so. Yeah. Full test. The king left the city, theoretically, Burgermeister Velerad is to rule in his stead. In practice, the decision has come from an entirely different source, which causes chaos in the city. Yeah. And that's what's interesting. The absence of the king is highly convenient for a whole bunch of characters. Tyler. Enjoying yourself? Exquisitely. Not enough food, nowhere to sit, and nothing but small talk. And I may be the only one here not involved in one of the many schemes or secret alliances being forged. It's a sign of the times, new customs and fashions. You think it better to show the Nilfgaardian we're barbarians? That we can't distinguish between a fork and a comb? That the only way we know how to feast is to get blind drunk and roar lusty songs while slapping the serving wenches on their ass? I'm a relic, someone from the past, so I'm rather attached to the old customs. Never understood nor liked the new ones. But really, Taller, why are you here? I'm a patriot. I'm the good of the kingdom at heart. A kingdom threatened by the schemes and alliances you were observant enough to note. I said I was an old-fashioned witcher. Be straight, like Taller the Fence would be. Taller the Fence does nothing for free. Taller the Fence is a scoundrel who'd prefer the Temple District not know he consorts with the cream of Vizima society. Have it your way. Let me tell you, friend, a serious slash fest is in the works. One without pardon. The defeated will be picked apart by crows. You'll be forced to fight for a new order, comrade, or against it. We will fight for our traditions and customs, for our land and our women. Who's this enemy? Who wants to steal our women? I wouldn't deceive you. I think you're one of us. It's a cause we share. I don't know the enemy yet, but I will soon, and when I do, the time of the sword and the axe will come. Blood will flow in the streets. And know this, comrade, there will be no room for your neutrality. Okay, that was actually a very hefty chunk of stuff. I dig it. And I don't really need to comment on it, considering it spoke for itself. Now, it apparently seems that Tala is not just a fence, he's something more. Which might also be why Asar Javid wanted him out of the way, because he's actually someone important. So let's uh, ask him who he is before we go down the line. Who exactly are you? And be straight with me, comrade. Temerian Intelligence. I execute the King's direct orders. I find traitors, rats, and foreign agents. I'm a spy. A highly placed spy. I can't deny it. May I ask a personal question? The amphibians you're after, are they a personal matter or an ideological one? It is all means personal. It's... But now let's think about it. If the game is smart, it'll allow us to lie. If it's not so smart, it won't. Let's check. That's what would Geralt do? He wouldn't say it's ideological, because th th no one would believe that. What ideology would he have to fight them? <laughs> Let's go for personal, as it's really impossible to lie in this situation anyway. Personal. Care to explain? They robbed me and killed a friend. That enough? <laughs> Got it. Thank you for being candid. So, yeah, who is who exactly is Duvet and what is who he doing exactly here? Who exactly is Duvet and what is he doing here? That Nilfgaardian dog is a mere pawn. 
I cannot fathom why Ada tolerates him. Explain. Like most knights of the order, he worries his dick's too small. So he gets aggressive whenever something scares him. Then, of course, he's an ilf guardian. Our princess has some weaknesses, but stupidity is not one of them. Maybe the princess has a game of her own going. Then she should choose better allies. Unlike chess, this game claims lives. I'm afraid someone might be using her. So, for a spy, he is very straightforward with this, but he also believes we're on the same side, which I would not disagree with in some ways. But he is still saying that Geralt is unable to remain neutral. We'll see if that ends up being the case. But so far, the choices apparent to us are between two groups of extremists. Neither are all that sympathetic, really. She'll have their reasons, and those reasons are grounded in something. Sorry. But their methods are extreme, as well as their beliefs. So let's ask about Louvarden. Is Louvarden somehow involved? I need to get Urk in a private meeting with him. At present, his intentions are a pure riddle. To me, too. Really? What do you mean? Your friend seems to get along famously with Livarden. For two strangers, they certainly have much to discuss. See for yourself. I trust Triss. I suppose you know her better than I, but don't say I didn't warn you. Regarding Louvarden, we know he heads some transnational organization of merchants, bankers, and other wealthy folk. Make what you will of it. So he has his fingers deeply embedded in just about anything. And the girl trusts Triss. This is saying that to start the conversation, or who means it? By all means, my only reason for distrusting her is that she's colluding still with the lodge. But Gerald doesn't really know about the lodge, but he knows that she's up to something. But she is still of his original close circle from before his amnesia. So by all means, we can't trust her. Ninety percent of the time, eighty percent. Well. From girl's point of view, maybe 70. <laughs> but again, I, as a player, am also biased because of what I've, my interpretations of the books. Or rather, interpretations of events, where if you interpret them differently, you're misinterpreting them, really. But uh, no, let's ask about the third one. Why do you want to draw me into a game that doesn't concern me? This game concerns you more than you imagine. You mean to tell me you're not interested in the conflict between the Order and the Scoia'tael? You mean to tell me you don't care? What about your lover, Triss Merigold? That's private. I want to destroy Salamandra. That is my only objective. Salamandra has a patron. Someone in this room, or one known here. You're up to your ears in this, Wolf, whether you like it or not. Okay. Excuse me for a moment. We'll talk later. Looking person for us. Let's just save the game because we've done a good chunk of stuff. Devout turned out to be the sworn enemy of Tala, the chief of Temerian intelligence service. Makes sense considering he's from a foreign, a all means hostile nation. But we also got more Tala knowledge, didn't we? I'm not certain we did, just need to find him. Where is he? Am I blind? Yes, I am. Okay, and the quest, our identity. It's been personal for us. Talk to other guests. Those two probably need to ending it, so let's chat with Devet if we can. Get out of my sight, freak. The princess? Witcher, you may approach. <clears throat> Duet, fetch me some wine. From that page boy at the end of the room. Your Highness. We may speak freely now. Geralt. Tell me about witches, and please, don't hide behind your code. What are you asking, milady? What is your view on politics? To me, politics is like an encounter with a lover. Would you agree? Not entirely. The similarity is evident. I am impressed by the comparison. Have you ever tried your hand at the fine arts? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> politics is an encounter with a lover. I mean, there's a joke lying in this, and it's great. Uh, 
The scale of the similarities are evident. The similarities are evident. Allow me one jest, Witcher. Very well. A countess said to a count, Shall I have dinner served? What a waste. Perhaps we might go for a walk. What a waste. May I ask a riddle then? Very well. What is warm, hairy, and dives into holes? A cock. Not at all. A mouse. A mouse in a cunt. What a waste. <laughs> Uh, what a waste indeed. What a waste indeed. Never mind. Back to our lovers ambulating about the room. You see, Witcher, politics is not unlike a tryst. It begins with full play, glances, conversations. Behold that witch with Luvarden. Now look to our noble Urkin in the courtiers. The dance grows bolder, fondling and such. Then, one is consumed by the desire to come together roughly, like animals. <laughs> Finally, one is left with sad, passionless copulation. Velarad and Duet, for instance. <clears throat> Excuse me, your highness. Sore throat. <laughs> we are adults, Geralt. We both know the desires of men. Not all men. I have no desire to meddle in politics, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. You may be right, Your Highness. Power, sex, sex, power. They both come down to one thing. Fucking others. Uh, both are good. <laughs> uh, the bottom one is the most on the nose about it. And not just, I want to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. So let's go for that one, because Book Girl could say something like that too. You may be right, your highness. Power, sex, sex, power. They both come down to one thing. Fucking others. <laughs> may I ask you a question? Go on. What is the king's stance on this topic? I mean, politics, of course. Ugh, dull. I have grown hungry, and there is naught worth eating at this feast. I tire of partridge tongues and caviar. Hmm, what do I most desire? I have it. I will answer your ever so dull question if you bring me what I most desire. Mm. Sure. I shall return shortly, Your Highness. Well, mm. right about her tastes. First. Let's do a this one. Call me paranoid, but I'm listening. What does the princess like to eat? Find me a stronger drink and we'll speak. We'll do. Uh, oh boy. 